I wanted to uh, show you guys how I ended up creating the uh, ground plane for the chrome loop. Uh, I was looking for kind of a uh, concrete kind of a look is what I was looking for. So I wanted to show you how I use procedural textures to get the, uh, the actual look. So... You know, our final piece looks like this, and to get this kind of a concrete kind of a look in here, let me show you how I did that. Okay, so the way I started off is the first thing is I wanted a kind of a tile look. So I went with a, a procedural texture called tiles. Okay, this is a procedural texture called tiles. This does need mapping coordinates, so you have to apply mapping coordinates. now. My base was already what I've already discussed in the other video in which that I've got a blended uh, ground plane in which that I'm going to have some reflection on the ground, but I don't want reflections uh, on um, the background back here, so I'm using two shaders that are blended together with a gradient ramp so that uh, I can get some reflection down here and not up there and I'm using the same thing um, with you so that when everything I put down here the texturing and stuff that I'm putting down here as it goes back it disappears and I don't want it going up the wall it's just for the ground so I uh, played with the um, tiles okay until I got the tiles the way I wanted I used a stack bond there's different way there's different ones in here that you can use and there's all kinds of advanced controls that you can play with here like how wide you want them and everything and so I tweaked with this quite a wide ways until I got it exactly the way that I wanted it uh, you know you have the setup for the grout and for the tiles and so there's a lot of options in here to get the look that you want and, uh, and of course, I, I had a specific look in my mind, and if you're doing this stuff, you're not copying me, you're grading your own thing, but I'm nesting procedural textures, so it's a complicated texture, but the first thing is that I wanted, um, you know, one texture for the ground and another for the back, and uh, I'm using some reflections on the ground that I didn't want on, on the uh, back part. Okay, so when you do that, it gives you really, really straight lines. And I wanted this to be kind of like an old kind of chipped uh, look for, to uh, the concrete. And so I came in and did some adjustments to it. So, um, what I did was I came in here and there's a roughness setting in this. So the roughness setting um, starts to add a noise to those lines so they're not perfectly straight. So when I did that, then I get, you can see I'm getting a little bit of a waver line. I didn't want too much, but I just wanted a little bit of this waver so that they weren't perfectly straight. Okay, so they're like kind of rough concrete tiles. All right, that was the only adjustment on that. Now, I, I floated a checker texture into the tiles. So in the tile section, I, float, I floated a checker in there. Okay, and the reason I was doing that is I wanted to break it up so that some areas had this but other areas didn't have it because I wanted a different pattern inside of here and a different pattern outside of there so the checker allowed me to kind of mask this area a little bit and so it switched it from being so consistent to being a little more broke up and it took me a while to adjust that and they never I never could get them to perfectly line up but that's okay they didn't need to perfectly line up they just had to be close to get me the look that I wanted okay so I'm floating a checker inside of a tiles and of course both of these need mapping coordinates but I'm using the same mapping coordinate for both of those and so that worked out fine it's just a planar uh, mapping coordinate okay all right so the next thing is 
I wanted to get a nice uh, breakup pattern inside of these areas. Okay, so by place, placing it, and this is a purlin marble, I'm using a purlin marble. And so on the checker, everywhere in the checker that it was black, that's where I'm putting the purlin marble. So I set the purlin marble up, and everywhere that the checker was black, the purlin marble is going to show up. Like so. Okay, so then let's see where'd I go from there. Okay, so now here is the other area. Okay, and for here, I did a. Uh, so for that section, I did a splat. Okay, so wherever the checker was white, the splat shows up, and wherever it was black, the pearl and marble showed up. And of course, these are all just in the bump slots. Okay, they're basically where initially were in the bump slots. Now later, I also put them in the roughness slot so they vary the shininess also. But initially, I'm just working in the bump slot. So it's not color, uh, it's just the bump that we're dealing with. Okay, then another thing I wanted to do was to break up the pearl and marble a little bit. I didn't like the way that the pearl marble looked, so I came back in with a cellular, and I floated the cellular into the black part of the pearl and marble. So now, um, let's go back here. This is the cellular raw before you're putting it in there, okay? And then here's where the cellular, once I've got the... Um, uh, pearl and marble in there. Okay, so this is the pearl and mar there's a cellular. This is the pearl and marble without the cellular. And then when I floated the cellular back into the pearl and marble, I get this. So that's how I got the final look of the pearl and marble. Is I floated the um, cellular in it, and then this that's the cellular just showing it raw. Then this is the pearl and marble raw, and then there they are together to get the final look that I wanted in there. And then there it is all together when I turn them both on. So that is tiles, then a checker, which is being able to me to discern this area separate from that area. And then you're putting the splat in, and then you're putting the uh, pearl and marble with the um, cellular to break it up, and that's how I got my final piece. So we're stacking a lot of different things together. Okay, then I mess with it a little bit more, and then there is pretty much the final look. But then I didn't like how this was, you know, uh, equally shiny on everything so that's when I went back and then I fed um, I fed it into my roughness setting now when I fed it to my roughness setting it was the opposite of what I wanted so I put an output node in here and I, so the reason I put an output node is I can go in here and invert it which made my black areas white my white areas black and then that got me uh, the actual area of roughness that I wanted which ended up looking like this so from that everything being glossy to this and now you'll see some areas are matte and some areas are glossy and I liked how that broke it up more okay then I started dropping in um, the liquid okay and initially I had the liquid really glossy but then I did play with putting a little bit of a bump in there so I played with it at one point. You know, a lot of this is just playing and experimenting to get the way, you know, your final piece. So uh, eventually I decided I didn't like the bump. I liked it more with the glossy. And then here it is where I'm blocking in and getting the extra. I wanted some more. I decided I wanted more liquid over there. And then I got the cable in there. And that's doing some more adjustments this is where I was getting a little bit of a waiver in there that the um, qualify mesh was doing and I didn't like that and so I rebuilt it and then eventually I got it back to where it was the smooth that I wanted 
and then that's when I started coming in and playing with breaking up the liquid to get the liquid the way I wanted to eventually getting it the way I liked it then I thought it was getting a little too dark and so then I came back and redid the lighting in it and readjusted the lighting to make it a little more pop and so there is the final piece that I ended up with so it was a lot of uh, stacking procedural textures, getting the ground the way I wanted it, getting the, the, the liquid, I just call it oil, it's like transmission fluid kind of oil, you know, and, uh, and then I, I wanted the nice kind of braided cable in there. And I played with the, the copper color at one point where it was more of a copper. Eventually I wanted it more of a steel look, so I adjusted the colors out of the copper to have a little more of a bluish steel look to it. And finally got to the final look that I wanted. So when you're doing things like this, uh, it's a lot of experimentation and trying this and trying that. No, I don't like this, throw this away. It's never just, here's how to do it. You know, when you guys are watching my tutorials, then you're just kind of, you know, to a certain degree, monkey see, monkey do it. Oh, he did this button, then he did that button, and he just, and how much did he do? Oh, it was 130 seconds, you know, it's like, you know, I'm showing you a process of my thought process of how I did the things. You can go and copy mine, but eventually, you know, it's like, okay, you do your own expression of it. Okay, so I want, you know, the, the chrome loop and everything, and I want certain basic things, but this, but this embellishment, do I want your concrete to look just like my concrete? No. Okay. Does your cable need to look just like mine? No. You know, I'm just showing you some different ways to approach things, different ways to enhance your final visual to get it to a point that you're satisfied with it and it has a personality to it and the personality is unique to you in specific ways. So, you know, what we're really doing in this industry most of the time is we set, you know, a client gives us a set of parameters, you know, and we got to meet within the set of parameters, but there's ways that I can kind of work within the parameters and enhance things. And if I'm doing too much, you know, I'm always need to go back to the client. What if I did this? What if I did that? You don't want to just throw things at them and shock them at the end. Oh my God, why did you do all this other stuff? You know, you kind of have to, it's a give taste. It's almost like, you know, what I, tell it people it's like a tennis match you know you're I serve to you you serve to me I serve to you you serve to me and that's the way it is when you're working with a creative director when you're working maybe some things you think might enhance it you don't just do them you present the ideas to them and then the creative directors can say no I don't want that or maybe yeah that might be interesting let's look at that and then you can show some experiments to do that so hopefully this helped you um, that you could find ways that maybe you could kind of enhance your piece to make it uh, to another level than just doing the tutorial that, that I gave. Okay, hope this helps you. Thank you.